Hey, Pastor Jeff here again, and welcome back to The Walk. Today, we're going to discuss the authority of the Word of God. Obviously, we are studying the Bible here. We're understanding and learning Scripture. We're learning theology, and we're pursuing God. We're wanting to know more about Him, and we have this Bible. What authority does it have over us, right? That's a big question. What does it claim for itself? What What are some other things that try to subvert that authority and and replace it in our lives. I mean, that's a, that's another thing that's going on, right? Um, and then what dangers do we face if we do not submit to the Bible's authority and, or if we just, again, let something else take over that authority? What, what dangers are inherent in that? We're going to talk about all those things and a few more, so stay tuned. Okay, so, you know, sometimes when we talk about authority, people get a little squirmish. They get a little uneasy about the subject, right? We all want to have authority over ourselves, especially living in the United States. I could say, you know, we, we experience the, the most freedom and autonomy, I think, more freedom than any, any other country in the world, any other time in history even. And I think that is such a wonderful blessing from God. It's, it's completely... Uh, we're, we're just so thankful for that freedom that we have. But, you know, when you get a lot of freedom like that and you get such autonomy, you get a false sense of of your own authority over your life. You think you've got the authority. And, and that can kind of, as a Christian, that can really affect how you follow God, I think. And, um, you know, the truth is we were bought with a price. <laughs> you know, Christ bought us with his own blood. Okay, so we are wholly and completely owned by God. He, he bought us. We are his servants. We are his slaves. He is our king. Uh, all of those things are true. And, and you know, since, since we've been purchased by him, since uh, he owns us, he is our, our king, our father. Um, and since he is God, he is the highest authority that exists. Okay, and if that's true, and he has given us this word, he has spoken and, of course, written this word for us, then this word carries that same authority behind it. Okay, when a king sends a letter, that letter has the authority of the king. When a king sends an ambassador, that ambassador who speaks on behalf of the king speaks with the same authority as the king. And... That's what we'll talk about next. So how do we know that the Bible is authoritative? Well, the Bible claims to be the very Word of God. Okay, the Bible claims itself. God sent prophets who were ambassadors, right? And they spoke the words of God. They said, thus says the Lord. And they proclaimed God's message to the people hundreds and hundreds of times, specifically in the Old Testament. And when they did that, they were claiming to be messengers of of. God. I mean, they were his mouthpieces. They were, and they claimed that his words, the words they were speaking, were his words. Okay, and it's it's interesting because when a prophet spoke, everything they said had to come true, otherwise they'd be considered a false prophet and put to death. So this is a very serious thing uh, for them. And so the prophets they spoke the very words of God. So the Bible. Um, of course, attests to the prophets. Jesus said the prophets obviously were speaking from God. And so the Bible attests that their word is the very word of God. So those inscripturated verses, uh, those passages, all of that, um, and all of Moses, and uh, I mean, obviously all of that is the word of God. It's called the word of God and it's understood as the word of God. Okay. Um, in, a, in the previous lesson, we read this verse from 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The Bible is breathed out by God. This scripture, this written word is breathed out by God. And therefore, as God's breath, (laughs) as his word, it is authoritative, right? In 2 Peter 1 19 through 21, it says this, And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention 
as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. That is how we got the Bible. That is how we got the scriptures. That's how we got all the prophecies. That's how we got the message that we have from God. Is because God, through His Holy Spirit, carried men along and they wrote them down. You remember in Hebrews 4, 12, and 13, it says this, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. You can see, if you read this passage carefully, that the Word of God is equated with the authority of God. No creature is hidden from his sight. All are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. The Word of God discerns the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It judges us. We talked about that in a previous lesson. The Word of God is authoritative. Okay, These verses all, and there's so many more. I could go through hundreds of verses that... The Bible claiming its own authority. Uh, again, read Psalm 119. You'll understand what the Bible um, says about itself. <laughs> so the Bible claims it's his authority, its own authority. Uh, it claims as our authority. But also, we have the internal witness of the Spirit of God. Okay? Let me read a verse. Let me read a passage to you before I explain it. I want to read this passage, follow along, and, and just listen to what it says. Because it's very important that we get this, okay? 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 16. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And the point here is this. To understand and admit and that the Word of God is authoritative and then submit to it, you must be saved. You must be a Christ follower. You must be a believer. You must be regenerate. Okay, You must have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you as a believing Christ follower. Otherwise, you will not understand, know, and submit to this Word as authoritative in your life okay because god saved us we understand be, having been given the mind of christ and having been given the holy spirit to dwell in us we understand and know that this word is authoritative okay that is hugely important don't don't miss that point because it is absolutely necessary that you know that I've known, I've known people that have read the Bible ten times over, okay, and still do not consider it authoritative because they're unregenerate. They're not saved, okay? The Spirit of God must do a work in you first before you will submit 
to the authority of God, and then, of course, to his word. The Spirit of God must do that work in you first. So we believe that the Bible is authoritative because of the internal witness of the Holy Spirit in us. Now, there's lots of other reasons to believe that the Bible is authoritative, um, but they're, they're less important than having the mind of Christ, having the Holy Spirit, and being convinced uh, by being regenerate. Um, some of them are, you know, of course, the Bible is historically accurate. It's internally reliable and consistent. It's true, okay? It obviously has tons of fulfilled prophecies that we can trust and we know. Um, it has effectively changed people's lives. It's, it has a powerful effect on people's lives and on the world itself. It's, it's a, definitely changed the course of history, you could say, right? Again, all, the, all of those things are great, but none of them compare, again, to the internal witness of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So that's why we believe the Bible is authoritative, okay? What other things compete for the authority that the Bible claims for itself? There's a lot of things that compete for the Bible's authority, right? And you'll be surprised at this first one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this first. Churches and or ecclesiastical authorities will seek to replace or, what's the word, oh, subvert maybe um, the Bible's authority and take it for themselves. Okay, uh, of course the Roman Catholic Church has done this for centuries um, and that's a major reason we had a Reformation, right? If you look on my shirt, I've got some Reformers. <laughs> Um, on my shirt, are reformed guys. Uh, Luther's there, so uh, he's right here. Calvin's there, and then of course, I've got Spurgeon and, and Edwards as later preachers from that reformed tradition. But, anyways, Luther, you know, nailed the 95 theses to the door, uh, because, uh, you know, of one of this was one of the reasons, and one of the things that came out of the Reformation was the I. The idea the, uh, of sola scriptura, scripture alone. The idea that the Bible alone is the word of God and is the only infallible rule of faith and life. Okay, it is authoritative. The, the church, the Roman Catholic Church, claimed, and, and still does, <laughs> that the church... Its interpretations, its teachings, and its traditions are the final authority in the faith and life of a believer. That's just not true. They they would they would say, and, and others do this too, not just them, but um, that the church can tell you in a way that binds you what the Bible teaches. They can interpret it for you, and then that is binding upon you. Okay, that is, that is not true. The church, no ecclesiastical authority, no church has that authority. Okay, there's, there's other, uh, others as well. You know, there's some modern day ecclesiastical authorities out there like self-proclaimed apostles. I'll put it in quotes. For instance, that claim that they have authority to speak the word of God. You've got, you've got some real abuses in the church. By some of these uh, teachers, okay, and it's not n always on a large scale. Sometimes just on an individual scale or in a in an individual church, you'll have you'll have authorities that will tell you what the Bible says, and if you disagree, you get kicked out or excommunicated. Okay, so churches and ecclesiastical authorities. There's cults that do this. Of course, we know, like we were pretty familiar with uh, cults out there that do. Uh, it's a pretty common practice to have the leaders or the the organization as the authority, and then this becomes a tool of manipulation. Okay, uh, the Bible becomes a tool of manipulation over the masses because you have to believe the organization or the individual uh, over and above whatever this says. Okay, there's some some dangerous things that can happen with that. 
churches and religious organizations are not authorities that stand over scripture, okay? Instead, they are under its authority and must submit to its authority and must be judged by its authority, okay? And held to the standards of scripture because it is authoritative. The authority of the church depends on the authority of the scripture. So, so like the church does have some authority, of course, but that authority is derived from what the Bible says. Like, hey, you can you can um, preach the gospel. You're commanded to, in fact. Uh, so that is your duty and your authority to preach the gospel. Uh, you administer the sacraments, the Lord's Supper, baptism, all those things. Okay, so these are all, that's, that's, the church does have authority, but it doesn't have authority over the scriptures. It's submit to the scriptures. Always, always, always. Okay. What else competes for authority in our lives uh, that the Bible would claim for itself? Well, the culture, right? Like we live in a pretty, pretty interesting culture, I'll say. I would say a pretty immoral and just, um, I don't know. There's lots of words I could use, but just bad, right? I'll just use that. <laughs> you know, cultural influence. They're, you know, they they would say, hey, what's legal uh, is moral, or what's scientific, um, as they that changing that term changes uh, and is defined differently all the time. What is science? Um, you know, they'll use that as uh, authoritative, and say, well, you know, like. Uh, a, a baby that's not born isn't a person. Okay, well, that's a philosophical and scientific argument that the Bible disagrees with. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hold to what the Bible says. Um, you know what is what's popular is not always righteous. It's not always good. It's not always holy. You know Peter and the apostles um, when they were dealing with the authorities. And the culture, the religious culture, in Acts 5.29, they said, we must obey God rather than men. Okay? All this pressure that comes from the culture, from the authorities, from the government, from, from the religious authorities we just talked about, we must obey God rather than men. That should be our answer. So the culture definitely tries to get in there and be an authority over us. You know, some of our relationships that we have, um, can can do that too, like relationships we have with family and friends. Um, they can, you know, we, it can exert like peer pressure on us. Sometimes families are like cults. There there there's some toxic things that happen, and so you know they can keep us from understanding and obeying God's word. You know, um, and that's a very very dangerous and sad thing. Um, and you know what else? competes for the authority ourselves like our pride our um emotions our experiences think about your emotions when you're when you're reading the bible you come across a passage that makes you feel very uncomfortable i don't like that i don't like the way that sounds it it sounds mean it sounds difficult it sounds too much, over the top, whatever it is, like whatever emotional reaction you get to that, your emotions are trying to be authoritative over the Word of God, okay? We all are going to face that because we all are sinners. We all came from a place of just depravity, right? So as soon as you start reading the Bible, you're going to understand, by God's grace, you have the Holy Spirit, you have the mind of Christ now, you're going to understand that feeling. Oh, I need to submit to that. Oh, that hurts. That 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 goes against my emotions. That that goes against my experience. You know, you have people that place experience or emotion over the Bible. And they fail to understand that this is our judge and this is what guides us into worshiping God truly and with the a spirit of truth, right? You can't you, you can't properly worship God if you don't understand the Bible. You don't understand doctrine. You you could be worshiping some other spirit or some other uh, evil thing, or you could just be simply worshiping yourself, 
thinking that you're worshiping God, but you're actually worshiping a God that you've created in your own mind, from your own emotions and experiences. You've, you've fashioned a God in your own image, okay? And that's, that's a very, very dangerous thing. So our emotions, our experiences, you know, they can all, they can all cause major problems and try to subvert uh, that authority of God's Word. So what dangers do we face if we don't submit to the authority of God or if we let something else creep in and, and take its place? Well, I've kind of mentioned several of them already. You know, the results can really be devastating, right? We can, we can fail to obey the commands of the Word of God. Think about, think about how, how harsh that is, how, how difficult that is to say that you love God and yet not obey Him. You can read throughout Scripture, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll do what I say. You'll do what I say. In the Great Commission, he says, teach them to obey all that I have commanded you. You cannot fulfill the Great Commission if you don't submit to the authority of God's Word. In fact, in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, hey, all authority in heaven has been given to me. Therefore, go. So he's He's saying, look, I'm the authority here, and, and he's speaking that, and it's written down for us to, to obey. But we can, we can fail. We can fail to obey the commands of the Word of God. And when we fail to obey his commands, we miss out on blessings, okay? We miss out on blessings that he wants for us, that are promised in the Word of God. You know, of course... God says, if you do this, you know, if you do things right, that's going to be a little bit better for you. Okay, you're you're gonna you're gonna reap what you sow in a sense. You're gonna you're gonna see the fruit of your actions, your righteous actions, here and now, not just here and now, of course, but here and now and in life to come. Jesus is clear on that. Another danger is we can, I mean, think about it. We can be deceived. And really fail to understand the true gospel. If we don't understand this as authority, we, we kind of take this as whatever. How are you going to know the gospel and believe the gospel if you don't think that this is authoritative? Okay? You can make the gospel turn into anything you want to then if you don't think this is authoritative. If this is just on the side and you have your own agenda... And you use this again as a tool of manipulation, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna fail to understand it, you're gonna fail to communicate the gospel properly, and you're gonna lead many people astray. And ultimately, one of the greatest dangers, of course, is proving that you are not saved, that you are not a child of God. If you don't take this authoritatively, there's so many, so many dangers, so much harsh, harsh realities that will come and so much harsh judgment that will come if you don't take this as authoritative. Let me conclude here. You know, God loves us. He's not He's not um, expecting more than what He's given, right? Um, and what I mean by that is He's given us everything we need to live a godly and holy and righteous life. Okay? And so he expects us to do those things. And he's given it here in his word. It's authoritative. It's good. It's a blessing. And I just, I just encourage you to submit to it, to know it, to read it, to get into it, and to love it, and to, and to dig in so that you can actually know God and pursue him. That's Again, that's doing theology, right? Let's... Let me give you a few questions to answer this week. First question is this. What encourages you most about the fact that God's word is authoritative in your faith and life? What encourages you most? Second question. 
What competes the most with the Bible for authority in your life? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I think I think uh, you'll have, if you're in a small group or in a group, there's probably multiple things that you guys are going to discuss about that because so many things compete, right? So many things compete. Okay, third question. What dangers have you faced in your life because you failed to submit to the authority of the Word of God? That is a sobering thought. I think we can all relate to you know how difficult that is when you when you fail to submit to the authority of God's word. We can all just basically give our testimony, right, of of what we were before we submitted to God's word, before we became a believer. Last question. What blessings have you enjoyed by submitting to God's word? I think you could probably count thousands, uh, but I just want you to kind of list them. And really, the purpose of that is to show appreciation for what God has given us. You know, He's given us salvation through His Son, and He's blessed us with His Word. He's given us His Holy Spirit. He's given us eternal life. All these things. What? Im- I just want you to just share what blessings have come in your life. Maybe give ex- you know specific examples of your obedience to the authority of the Word of God and how that really changed your life and blessed you. Okay, guys, I love you so much. I'm so glad you've been following along. Thanks for joining us on the walk. Take care. God bless you. We'll talk soon.